Hello, thank you for joining me today. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a very quick little picture of these autumn leaves, taking advantage of the time of year and the beautiful colours that we've got around. So I just wanted to talk you through it quickly before I actually show you the video of the process. It didn't take me very long at all because I actually cheated a little bit and drew around the leaves themselves. So I just popped outside and picked two lovely leaves and I actually drew round these. Now you'll see I made the mistake of not brushing these off and um, I made a little bit of a smudge on this one. It doesn't matter now because it's been covered up but you'll see that through the video because there was some mess on the back of the leaves. So when you go outside and pick a couple of leaves just give them a little brush off or a blow off to make sure you've got no bits of dirt on there that are going to spoil your painting. Okay so I'll just put those to one side. So to begin with I drew round them using a water-soluble pencil and uh, these are the Faber-Castell ones but when you're looking for water-soluble ones they usually have a little brush on the side of the pencil. Now and I use yellow because if I'd have done it in either ink or in my uh, on ordinary pencil the line would have showed but the line just sort of disappears especially when you're using a water-based one it, m it merges into the paint when you put the paint on and so you've not got that harsh line showing that you have to worry about rubbing out later or anything. So I did that first, then I used some sunburst lemon which is absolutely one of my favourite colours in the brush o, and I just filled those in and whilst they were still wet, sorry and I should have said after that I used the alizarin crimson for the stalks, but those are the only two colours I actually mixed up and the others I just popped on whilst they were still wet. And then you'll see I should say actually that the colours I used, burnt sienna, which I kept to the outside edges because if you look at the leaves themselves they've got these where they're damaged, you know, they've obviously been there all summer, they've been um, open to the elements and they get this little bit of damage on the edge, so I kept the brown to the edge. I put a little bit of orange in, I know the, the leaves themselves haven't got too much orange in but just to add that autumn feel and some of the alizarin as well, so just the four colours. And I just felt that we needed that, that brown to go nearer to the edges and to make more of a, a definition. So you'll see I used the um, pipette to do that. And, but whilst you're doing that, if they're drying, if that original wash of the sunburst lemon is drying as you're working, it's quite warm in here because I've got the heater on, you can just add a little bit of extra water with your pipette and manipulate the... Um, brush around whilst it's still wet. Rather than using the spray, because if I'd have used the spray it would have gone into the background and I wanted to leave the background white. So it's a bit more precise than using your spray. You can just dab a little bit of extra water on. You could do it with your brush as well, but it's quite a nice effect using the tip of the pipette to move some of the brush around to use to make some of the veins and the lines and the crisp edges of the leaves. And I then added a little bit of extra colour into the stalks as well. And then I left it to dry and once it was completely dry you can blow away any excess powder. It's best to do that outside. If you do it inside you end up with bits of powder everywhere and the next time you come to do a painting um, you're finding that you get those on your paper and things. So at this stage you could just leave it like this and actually I'd be quite happy to leave it like this. I think it's quite a nice little image as it is, um, just letting it be quite free. If you wanted to make it more precise, if you wanted to have a little bit more detail on there, you could use your pencils to come back and perhaps um, sort some of the edges out. So here where we've got them overlapping, you might want to just put a little bit of brown or something just to highlight that and, as, and things like the, so I'll get a red one, um, you know, you might want to make the veins stand out a little bit more. But I'm not going to do too much of that because I actually quite like it as it is. But you could come in once it's completely dry and just add a little bit of extra detail with your pencils. Okay, but I'm going to leave it. I think it's okay as it is. So I'll show you the process now. I'll put a few notes underneath. So really the only materials that you need are a mixed media pad or mixed media paper or a watercolour paper would be nice. But if you're using a watercolour paper, use a smooth one, a hot pressed. Um, with the brush o, with the rough uh, papers, it tends to sink in and your colours go much more dull. So if you keep it a nice flat surface, a nice smooth surface, you seem to keep the colours better. We've got a number six round brush there, the palette and the four colours and that's everything you need. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the video and I'll be back with you again soon for another video. Bye for now.